Chapter 21 of Young and Friedman's University Physics presents what's called Coulomb's Law. Put in word form, Coulomb's Law states that the magnitude, that is the greatness of the electric force, between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is something that Coulomb himself verified experimentally. Um, he came up with this, uh, this idea of the proportionality and inverse uh, proportionality by way of experiment, by moving charges apart from each other and uh, by uh, reducing the charges on each one and, and, and seeing what the force was uh, between them. And of course, he then put it into formula form. In formula form, Coulomb's law looks like this that the electric force equals a constant times uh, the charge 1 times charge 2 divided by the square of the distance between those two charges. So if Q1 and Q2 are two charges, uh, then uh, remember in word form, Coulomb's law says that the force is proportional uh, to the charges. So it's proportional to Q1 and it's proportional to Q2. Therefore, it's proportional to, to Q1 times Q2. Uh, and then he found out that it was inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two charges, r, and so uh, divided by r squared. And then, of course, a constant uh, will, will get you the rest of the way. That constant turns out to be 9 times 10 to the ninth power Newton meter square per Coulomb squared. A coulomb is a very, very, very large uh, charge um, involving, you know, a charge that would that would have force over the space of a meter. Uh, we would not normally encounter that level of, of charge, but that is the uh, what the constant has turned out to be experimentally. By the way, notice how similar Coulomb's law is to the law Newton's law of, of universal gravitation. That is, that the force of gravity equals the constant g times the product of, of two masses uh, divided by the square of the distance between those two masses. There is a, a uh, similarity in these two uh, force equations uh, that bespeaks of some uh, deeper uh, commonality between them. Now, here's another form of the equation. Uh, in another form of the equation, we can replace the constant by 1 over pi, 4 pi uh, and then epsilon zero is another constant. Uh, now you may say, well, this is a more complicated way to express the constant in form in the form of another constant. Why would you want to do that? Well, the reason why you would want to do that is because E is the most basic unit of charge uh, that seems to be possible. That is the charge that a proton has positively or an electron has negatively. That charge would seem to be somewhere around 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 12th power Coulomb squares squared per Newton meter squared. That, that seems to be the most fundamental charge of reality as we know it. And so to put it in the form, uh, to put the constant k, k again is 9 times 10 to the 9th, um, to put it in the form of 1 over 4 pi epsilon, um, where epsilon is the charge of a proton positively or an electron negatively, that just will become convenient uh, as you get into uh, uh, later parts of, of physics, particularly nuclear uh, uh, parts of physics. So uh, the last part of this section has to do with adding up forces. What if there's more than, uh, than two forces? Basically, when multiple forces are involved, the total force on any other point charge or charge at a point um, is going to be the vector sum of the other charges on it. So you're going to, if it's a three-dimensional thing, you're going to add up the x components, and you're going to add up the y components, and you're going to add up the z components, and so forth. Or you're going to, you're going to add up the the force of Q1 on Q3, and then and then uh, figure out the the force of Q2 on Q3, and then add that uh, those two forces together. Uh, so that's the superposition uh, of forces.